Thank you, Mr. Mauer. I'm Joe. Thanks for having us back here. Uh, we're located in the Princeton, New Jersey area, and we're working on a uh, new primary thermal source of uh, power. It's very well needed in this day and age. Uh, what we do is uh, we react atomic hydrogen with certain catalysts. We form lower energy states of hydrogen than were uh, previously thought possible. We bring the negative electron, the hydrogen atom, closer to the positive proton. It typically releases about 100 times energy of burning hydrogen. And since you can uh, produce hydrogen gas from water with one times the energy input of that combustion, we're getting 100 times in our reaction, you can actually use H2O, H2O as a source of hydrogen fuel. The uh, products of this reaction are light, power, plasma, and new chemical compounds. All these uh, aspects of the reaction were predicted theoretically and they've been confirmed experimentally. The results are published in uh, 65 peer-reviewed journal articles and uh, they've been validated by uh, leading other scientists external to the company. Over the past year, uh, we've been working more on um, increasing the kinetics of the rated reaction and we now are achieving power densities comparable to those in uh, fossil-based power plants. We've also been working on uh, scaling the reaction up, and this has been the first year we've gotten to the point where we've got a high enough scale and enough power that we're actually uh, extracting significantly more power out of the system than we're putting in, and this would be a forerunner for the thermal unit that would be in uh, engineered commercial applications in space and process heating and electrical power units. So once we uh, finish this and uh, continue to improve the uh, process, we see it having uh, very uh, vast applications from uh, micro-distributed power all the way to central gen. And once you produce electricity from the thermal power, you can convert that into a lot, a lot of hydrogen that can be used as a replacement for gasoline and motive power applications. And in addition, it has heating, lighting, and, uh, and there's special chemical applications to the technology. Uh, one of the things uh, that happened this past year, uh, one of our obstacles has still been the, uh, the impediment that people have uh, resistance over the theory, and that's based on uh, that the current theory, quantum mechanics, it's purely mathematical, it's non-physical, and uh, relies on enormous amounts of approximations, adjustable parameters. It can't uh, solve molecules, for example. It relies on, again, approximations and, and the like. Um, I, in the past, solved many, many problems, thousands of, uh, of fundamental problems at the atomic level, and now in the, uh, this past year, I've been able to solve extraordinarily complicated materials, having trillions of trillions of electrons and being able to explain exactly where the electrons are and what their energies are and matching the uh, predicted uh, properties of these materials like metals, semiconductors, nanotechnology components, ionic compounds, things like diamond, very, very uh, extensive structures and very many uh, different forms of molecular compounds. In particular, uh, I've now solved the basic building blocks of organic chemistry, and we can solve uh, now molecules in exact equations. So for the first time, molecules of infinite length and complexity, exactly what they look like and what their properties are. We think this is going to be uh, transformational in the biotech industry, uh, particularly pharma, material science and chemistry. We've set up a subsidiary company, and we have online now a, a beta version of a product of software, and we think this is going to have very uh, dramatic effect in terms of finally winning the theory debate and advancing the uh, adoption of this power technology. I'll be uh, speaking right after lunch in the uh, Red Cross Hall. Appreciate your time. Thank you.